I also think that the uh, rules part from Pendragon with the passions yes. and loyalties in the new mm -hmm. RuneQuest game makes it a bit more mm -hmm. hero questy. It lifts. It's no part. longer just about no. how much damage you do with your hatchet. No, yes. and when you take the Christian or mm -hmm. the Pendragonish mm -hmm. part away from it, I think it works quite nicely in the new rules. I think it to is lift the, this mm -hmm. uh, metaphysical. Religious I, com I completely <laughs> agree that, that that's one thing in playing this that you keenly feel is the lack of the, the extra oomph when you really care. Yeah. That's the, you keenly feel it that I really want to put some... And I think that also by including the passions from the Pendragon system into the new edition also helps to lift the cultural aspect of it mm -hmm. because there's you know here's here's my tribal warrior and there's your tribal warrior but i have a loyalty two of our loyalties and passions are the same and two differ and that makes all the difference in the world yes, why does. we can't be friends for very long and why we will have a conflict three three gaming sessions down the road because my hatred for the lunars and your whatever you know, will conflict with each other. My mother from Tarsh will make exact. us clash. Yeah. In the Worms footnotes, in one of the very early 80s issues, there is a piece on dragon newts. And that's where we first see the, the first write-up of the dragon newts. And it is firmly informed, it firmly informs the reader that no mere role player could possibly do this so they have to be non-player characters, which should tell you something about the attitudes at work in the day. But uh, they talk about, that's where they first introduce mechanically significant personality traits. And with, like the traits, not the passions, but the traits in uh, Pendragon, uh, they have involuntary qualities as yeah. well as mechanically boosting qualities. And I think that's actually the first place. And you can track it then through a few other games, Pendragon most obviously. Other authors, uh, Fading Suns has personality issues like that. And then there are a few of others, Albedo, uh, the role-playing game based on a comic. Uh, trait and personality and effort as mechanics, will the effort as mechanics become a big deal. And there was a game in 2002 called The Riddle of Steel, which is also heavily influenced by these. And also, like, it is interesting, they act like the trait, like, sorry, they act like the passions in mechanically, in adding dice to what you are doing. But they fluctuate like the traits. And it was, uh, it was quite interesting to meet the author, who's a good friend of mine, and he was very clear. It's, it's fascinating. He was only 20 when I met him, 20 or 22 or something. And talking to him was almost like somebody had ported the Chaosium, the early Chaosium, into somebody's head. Okay. Uh, when he, because the Riddle of Steel was a brutally realistic game in its ambitions, and he was a practitioner. It's just like these guys were into the Society for Creative Anachronism. He was into the sword art thing, the Euro sword art groups, and felt very strongly about how every cut and every posture and everything like that was to be mechanically, you know, experienced in play. And yet he told me this is Jake Norwood, said, with all of that in there, and all the little bonuses you get from all the little rules that you choose and options you choose, if you're, he called them spiritual attributes, the person who has all these dice racked up in their spiritual attributes who are fighting in circumstances in which they apply is going to walk over the other if he does not have the same commitments. And so he deliberately built the spiritual attributes to overwhelm all of that little highly grained attention to all the little sword art thing. He knew he was saying this is an instrument for writing fiction. This is not supposed to be a VR 
of historical swordsmanship. This is an instrument for writing fiction. The historical swordsmanship stuff, that's the, that's the fun. That's the icing. And playing RuneQuest, as I say, you play these original forms of RuneQuest and you feel that lack. You just, that's why I think so many people gravitate to Pendragon, which, which completely accepts that Mallory is absurd. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Completely accepts it. You know, how many times does somebody just go berserk and kill everybody in the pavilions? I don't know. Why? I don't know. <laughs> you know like, what, did you behead the maiden? Yes. So <laughs> yes, I did. So <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, again? I know, again. <laughs> how many Elaines are going to come to a bad end? What is this? And so the, the accepting that absurdity and the involuntary qualities. And people complain, I don't want to play a game where the, I, you know, it makes me do something. No, Pendragon, you love it. Because you know the knights are crazy. <laughs> and so the, the acceptance of the passions, specifically into RuneQuest, I think is a great decision. Um, before I chatter on us. Anybody want to initiate a topic? <laughs> well, we're about to head up on our original time slot. Okay. But um, um, let's go on for a bit if people want sure, to. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, people anybody. have other commitments as well. Yeah. So. I, I don't remember. Are there still ducks? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes. Very important. Thank you. <laughs> and they are quite <laughs> crucial. They are quite crucial. We'll have to find a way to really make them. Have yeah. you, or let's talk a little bit about the pedigree. In question. <laughs> yeah, because yes. ducks yeah. have a very strong connection to the Swedish uh, yeah, RPG say, history, yeah. both yeah. in Duck and Amona. I want to hear about that in a moment, yeah. but let me back, let yeah. me back up with, uh, let's go back to the middle of the 1970s, where one of the more addled, brilliant writers at Marvel was Steve Gerber. And who, the duck. You know, oh, the duck. Howard Duck, exactly. And what's interesting about Howard the Duck, first of all, is that anybody would have wanted to copyright him and make movies about him when, and then get mad when someone else does a duck when the jury could always ask you, but wait, isn't there already a duck? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but regardless, uh, he brings in Howard the Duck as partly a parody of Conan of the time. He's wearing Conan's helmet from the early comics. And uh, Howard is very popular and is a big hit with, with Marvel fans and comics fans. And it's very much a, a also an expression of an earlier or a contemporary cartoonist, a little bit earlier, uh, Von Bode. Von Bode, the cartoonist uh, whose style all of you will recognize. If you like Wendy Peeney, Phil Folio, or any of these cartoony fantasy artists, you are looking at a, a, a number of others, too. I'm just riffing on different artists in my head. But these obnoxious, short, animalist, animal men and their slightly more, slightly more uh, uh, admirable but very slutty girlfriends, women. And the, you, you, you can see it in, you know, that, that image, the obnoxious little animal guy and then the broad, right? The, the cool, she's a cool broad, but she's a cool broad who knows how to party. And that image is Von Bode all over, all over, all the time. And Howard is, and of course, Howard and his girlfriend Beverly are a Von Bode characters walked onto the pages in Marvel. Hugely popular. And so when Apple Lane comes out and it's all about this duck, we all know what it's talking about. It's completely embedded in these comics. There's nothing strange about it at all. And we don't have this pristine image of fantasy as a pure genre anyway. So years later, when people said, yeah, but the ducks are ridiculous. What are they doing in this? You know, I was like, you 
<laughs> are dead to me. <laughs> you have no, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> I, I think I have to admit something here. Yes. I, I have a blog that's called uh, No Fucking Ducks. Oh! <laughs> would you like to share a little bit of your view so that your point of view is uh, well, established at the panel? Well, I mean, I, I haven't actually played uh, Rune Quest, but I mean, I played a uh, lot of Drunk or the Water when I was younger. Mm -hmm. It also has ducks. Yes. Is that so? Yes. Mm. yes. Uh, we like ducks. Uh, yeah. well, White ones and brown. Well, you had Donald. You 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 appropriated Donald. So I, I get that. Yeah. You and the Italians. Have yeah. No. I, the Donald, ducks. So. The, I think if I if I remember correctly, the ducks are in Dark of the because they were in RuneQuest. That I believe. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I believe that. I, but yeah. I think it was and like I, I thought that when I started party playing, I was like I think ten or twelve years old, and I think what fantasy was very serious, and I couldn't stand. Uh -huh. Something as ridiculous as that in it. <laughs> I, I do get it, but the seriousness of the fantasy, is that is related, don't you think, to the onset of fiction like the Belgariad, to the yeah, onset yeah. of fiction where you cannot quite tell if you are reading role-playing supplements in the novels? They were immensely popular in Sweden oh. in the late 80s, early mm -hmm. 90s. The whole fantasy that, boom in Sweden right, right. were Eddings yeah. and Jordan. That's, I was about to mention Raymond Feist yeah, as well. Feist yeah. as well. The long Brooks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I also yeah. think it might be a generational question uh, with us coming to fantasy as uh, when we come to fantasy role-playing uh, as, well, as you say, 10 or 12 years yeah. old and that is an age where it's very, very important not to be childish. Mm. Yeah. Uh, since you are a child, you're very eager not to be childish. Mm -hmm. And th then the ducks end up being there. But that's what the sort of earth? thing I read a few years ago. I was a child then. Now, at the mature age of 12, <laughs> I, I have transcended the need for ducks. Yes. <laughs> on the other hand, if you look at RuneQuest, the drolls aren't funny. Correct. They're tragic. Correct. Yes, they're very tragic. And not only that, they are, it's a wonderful example of not losing the monster. You, they are not, it, it, the monstrousness of the trolls is not merely a human rumor. No. And yet, the, the meaning and their justification, their, their experience of their lives is extremely rich and extremely understandable. The Haunted Ruins mm -hmm. remains to me probably one of the most ambitious supplements for RuneQuest because it does not have steps to a story. You do not run someone through the Haunted Ruins campaign chapter by chapter. It gives you a dynamic kin and historical and geographical complex. All of it is dynamic. And it is given that when you arrive, there are going to be different responses, responses upon the responses. And at that point, the authors say, and go. Hands off. And go. When people do role-playing games, they typically learn from the adventure pack and following the adventure. And that has led to, I think, a certain subordination to the author on the part of role players. They, they do not become authorial in their, their, their drive in play. They become subordinated and almost audience members. Mm. And so I remember talking about this with Greg and he cited the Haunted Ruins as his, his model for how he wished it would be. And I remember Prex mm -hmm. in the early 80s as such mm -hmm. uh, sandboxy, very rich setting. Yeah, and also all yeah. the tribes mm -hmm. and you get the metaphysical And also if you, if you look at the early boxes for Peavis and mm -hmm. uh, the Big Red Ball, yeah. which were extremely sandboxy actually. And you looked upon the novels of Griselda and Wolfshead, which gave you more information mm -hmm. about the world. So it's yeah. yeah. I never really saw the Big Rubble as a place to Kill and loot. I mean, you went there. Uh, you tried to find something that might have some mythological or political value, and then you died. <laughs> Basically, it was almost impossible to survive. 
Especially in the early room quest rules. When well, the limb quest, the limb as quest, we called it, yes. You've got, you got yeah. 35% new bro sword. Yeah. They found the bro in your buy. Mm -hmm. We are running oh, a little bit oh. over. But look at all the things we could yes. chat about. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Would we like to uh, to continue, some of us, if you have the time, and, and, and in the months to come, uh, well, certainly to have to screen conversations yeah, and to continue sure. with the yeah. discussions? Yeah, that's quite with interesting. So much. That would um, be great. I